Hi again. We're on chapter 11 now. And they're following Nancy into the meadow. And she's going to show some more secrets as to what's going on behind Jessica Jones' invisibility um, powers. So, here we go. Chapter 11. Nancy led us to a small clearing in the meadows. Around us, grass rose as high as our waists. Help me pat it down, she said, stamping her feet on the grass to create a flattened space. Once she decided we had enough room, she bent low and opened her bag. I went over to look as she pulled things out of it. A metal bowl on a wire sand, a piece of cloth with about ten different crystals wrapped in it, and a thin glass bottle filled with clear liquid. You just happen to carry these things around with you, I sighed. Nancy laughed. No, I just happen to think you might want to see some of this, she looked from Izzy to me. Ready to get started? We're ready, I said. Good. Nancy bent down and set to work. She picked up one of the crystals. It was a small bunch-like shape in deep, deep green. It looked like a mini broccoli. This is called malachite, she said. She opened the bottle and poured some clear liquid into the bowl. I need to use this sparingly, she said. We don't have much left, but I've got enough to put on a good show for you. Then she dropped the malachite into the bowl. Watch, she told us. Nothing happened for a moment. Then the liquid began to fizz gently, bubbling and clouding over. The malachite bounced around in the bowl as the bubbles formed. Look, Izzy said, gasping at the, as she pointed at the bowl. The crystal was getting bigger. Within half a minute, it had grown to at least three times its original size. It'll crack the bowl, I said. It's okay. It doesn't get bigger than this, Nancy replied. We watched as the bubbles gradually subsided and the liquid calmed down. Then Nancy reached in and pulled out the malachite. She handed it to Izzy. It was nearly as big as her hand. That's amazing, Izzy said, turning to me. Do you want to hold it? I reached out for the stone, but Nancy put a hand on my arm to stop me. Wait, she said. What's up? We've done some tests, so I'm sure there's nothing to worry about, but I want to explain something about our results before you touch it, okay? Okay, I agreed. Each of the crystals is unique, and they all do a completely different thing. Take this one, for example. We had a necklace with a malachite pendant on it. When we put it on the serum, the whole necklace grew, not just this crystal. Like, the whole of me turns invisible, I said, and not just the crystal? Right. So we know if the crystal is physically attached to something when it interacts with the serum, it transfers its powers to the attached object. Or person, as he added. Or person, Nancy agreed. We've also found that once an object has been given a power from one crystal, it will never gain the power of another one. So you mean that now that Jess has turned invisible because of the rose quartz, she won't pick up any other powers even if she touches another crystal? Exactly. So it's safe for me to touch the malachite, I asked. According to our tests, yes. And there's no reason to think it will be any different for you. But look, let's try with a different one, just to be on the safe side. One that definitely won't make you grow three times your size. Nancy held her hand out and Izzy passed the giant broccoli back to her. It'll go back to its original size in a little while, Nancy said, placing it back on the cloth and picking up another stone. It was light purple and shaped like a mini tower with a tiny hole on top. Here, let's try this one, I said. She said, what's it? What's this one? Amethyst. Izzy and I leaned in to study the crystal. The bottom half was a deeper purple, purple than the top and looked as though it had been crushed and condensed. The top, the top half was so light it was see-through. As the sun caught it, it glinted and sparkled. Amethyst was, one, was the one that flew when you put it in the serum, Izzy said. Good memory, Nancy confirmed. Okay, watch. She went through the process again. The crystal bounced and shook inside the serum. A few moments later, it rose out of the bowl, hovering above it. It climbed as high as our heads. After a few minutes, it gradually came back down and Nancy caught it. It's beautiful, Izzy stared. St I stared at it too. Nancy saw me looking and held it out to me. You want to try touching it? She asked. Accidentally being able to fly was definitely less of a problem than accidentally growing to be three times my size. I reached out for the crystal. Nancy and Izzy studied me as I turned it over in my hands. Nothing happened. I closed my eyes and cleared my mind just to double check. Still nothing. Actually, not quite nothing. I could feel myself starting to turn invisible, but my feet were still firmly on the ground. I opened my eyes before Nancy could notice my fingers starting to disappear. You're fine, she said. I knew you would be. Too bad, Izzy said. Being able to fly would be amazing. I passed her the crystal. You want to hold it? Izzy took the amethyst from me and closed her fingers around it. If I could have any superflower, superpower in the world, it would be the ability to fly, she said dreamily. You can keep it if you like, Nancy said. Really? You know it won't have any effect on you, though, don't you? Izzy smiled. Yeah, I know, but I can always imagine. She put the crystal in her coat pocket and zipped it shut. Thank you, she said. Here, let me show you some others. Nancy picked up what looked like a jet black, pe jet black pebble with a few faint lines running across its middle. Izzy peered at the stone. What's that? Oinks. Here, feel it. 
Izzy took the stone from Nancy, waited in her hands for a moment, and held it out to me. I took the oinks from Izzy. It's like a stone, I said. Hard, cold, smooth. Nancy took the oinks back and dropped it in the serum. Okay, watch this. Just as it had just as it had with the malachite, the liquid soon began to bubble gently. I kept my eyes on the oinks as it spun around the bowl. For a moment, nothing happened. Then it began to change. It didn't look like a stone anymore. It had stretched and elongated. Nancy reached in and picked it out of the bowl. She handed it to me. The oinks felt like rubber. It flopped over my fingers. I pulled it and stretched it as thin as paper and as long as my arm. Then I scrunched it up and folded it into a ball. I threw it to Izzy. Catch! She missed it and the oinks flew past her. It hit a rock on the ground and bounced up in the air at an odd angle. As Izzy ran to catch it, I turned to Nancy. I don't get it, I said. Why are all these things happening? What's it all about? We don't get it either, Nancy said. We've worked so hard on these formulas, trying to find a breakthrough and cures for real and rare illnesses. We were never looking for this. To be honest, it's turned our lives upside down. Yeah, you and me both, I said. Izzy was back with the bouncy oinks and a huge smile. This is incredible, she said, eyeing the other crystals on the cloth. Nancy saw her looking. Come on, she said. I'll show you a few more. We hauled it around and watched while Nancy gave us a demonstration of more crystals and their superpowers. A bright green piece of jade that split itself in two, a silver pebble called Snowflake Obsidian that disappeared from the bowl and reappeared ten feet away, lying on the ground, a piece of topaz that turned to earth that turned to ice. Wow, you're lucky you bought Jess a rose quartz, Izzy said. What if it had been one of these? She could have ended up as ice as an ice statue or something. I glared at Izzy. I'm sorry I got you all into this, Nancy said softly. I really am. It's okay, I said. It's cool. Okay, it's a bit weird, but it's amazing too. I get to be kind of a superhuman super freak. Nancy grimaced. It's too bad your superpowers can't tell me more about what's going on at the lab. You mean about the doctor losing things, she asked. Nancy nodded, then shrugged. I'm sure it's just James being careless. I don't even want to think about the other option. Which is that? I asked. Nancy turned away. That someone's been breaking in, she smiled under her breath. Then she gave us a quick smile. I'm sure I'm wrong, though. The only way in is a coated keypad, and it hasn't shown any side of being tampered with. James has got his eye on some very high-tech security motion centers and all that, but outfitting the lab with the latest scientific equipment used up James's windfall, so we haven't installed it yet. But you think someone might be getting in, I asked? I don't know. I'm probably worrying over nothing. I've already told you that James can be absent-minded. I'm sure that's all it is. It's just, I like to know exactly where things are and what's going on. And you don't, as he said. No, I've been making charts of all the crystals we're tested. we've tested and the results we've gained. And I'm sure some of them have gone missing. But it's probably just James doing something with them and forgetting to tell me. Why don't you ask him, as he suggested? You don't know James, she said. He's too twitchy. The slightest thing could trip him over the edge, and I don't want anything up to upset him. Not now that we're finally on the verge of something so exciting and potentially dangerous. Dangerous, I broke in. Nancy paused. Her eyes narrowed as she thought. Then she nodded to herself. I'll show you. Stand back. We moved back and watched as Nancy picked up a crystal with a pair of tongs. It was an oblong shape and a glimmering amber color. Bright, almost gold, in fact. What's that called, I asked tiger's eye nancy replied without looking up now that i looked at it it actually looked just like the bright amber eye of a tiger it was the stone the shop was named after nancy dropped the stone carefully into the serum just as with all the other colors the liquid bubbled and throthed keep back now nancy warned she carefully reached into the bowl and lifted the stone out with the tongs as soon as it was as it was out of the bowl she threw the stone away from us where are you izzy began count to ten nancy said and watch about ten seconds later, I was about to ask what we were supposed to be watching, and then, boom, the ground where the stone had landed erupted in a small explosion. What the? I stared at the smoke rising from the ground. Nancy waved us over to check it out. We followed her to a spot and watched, open-mouthed, as she reached down into a small crater and burned the ground to pick up the stone. Izzy was staring at me with watery eyes. What if this had just been the one you'd given... What if this had been the one you'd given Josh, she asked. Would she have blown up herself? You think I haven't been kept awake at night by precisely that question, Nancy replied. She handed the stone to Izzy. Check it out. I looked over Izzy's shoulder. It's completely unarmed. Unharmed, I said. Exactly. My guess is that you wouldn't have blown yourself up, but you might have done some serious damage to things around you. Which is why you're so terrified of something like this ending up in the wrong hands, I said. Correct, Nancy frowned. But I can't try to find out if anyone's been breaking in without setting off alarm bells for James. And that's the last thing I want to do. I just have to hope I'm worrying about nothing. Yeah, I said. But I was thinking, what if you're not? 
It was only later on, after Nancy had left us and Izzy and I were ambling back through the park, that I decided to share the thoughts that were on my mind. Nancy would never approve, so I couldn't tell her, but I was positive Izzy would help me figure it out. So, you know how Nancy's worried about what's going on at the lab, but doesn't want to bring it up with the doctor, I began? Uh-huh, Izzy said. Well, we can help her. We can find out what's going on. We can? I nodded. Then I glanced around to make sure there was no one around who might overhear our conversation. The coast was clear. Listen up, I said. I've got an idea. Izzy looked around, too. Then she leaned in to listen. What's your plan? A stakeout. A stakeout? Yep. We hang around the lab out of sight, and if anyone's, and if we see anyone go in, we follow them invisibly and so, see who they are and what they're up to. It's perfect. Izzy frowned. Well, yeah, apart from one thing. What? It might be dangerous. How can it be dangerous? No one will see us. We'll keep hidden. They won't even know we have anything to do with the lab. And if someone does come and I do follow them, I'll be invisible. Izzy chewed on her fingernail. You sure we shouldn't check with Nancy first? Nancy will just get all nervous and probably say no. And you heard what she said. She's worried. How cool would it be if we could do this couple, a couple of times, check that there's no one breaking in, and then we can set her mind at rest. Izzy took off her glasses and wiped the lenses while she thought. Then she put them back on and nodded. Okay, she said. Let's do it tomorrow. And that brings us to the end of chapter.